And if I could be so bold as to offer a thought here for the future generations of students at Valparaiso, or anywhere else for that matter, uh, I would suggest you could hardly do better than to study his lifetime of courage and commitment and learn from his tremendous example. We had somebody at my presidential library the other day talking about the virtues of Thurgood Marshall. And I say the same thing about him. We had different views. I got to be his friend when I was president, but he was a man of virtue and a man of commitment. And I think this, this, these qualities of character and values are very, very important when it comes not only to the high court, but to the district benches and to everybody else who serves in the judiciary. Uh, America's been said time and time again as a nation of law. John Adams once wrote that good government is an empire of laws. And speaking of John Adams, I never thought President Adams and I had much in common uh, until one of my sons became president. And then, then, then I found that I, And then I found myself to be a curious scholar, historic scholar, instantly. And I, I, I studied a little about it, and I began wondering a great deal about our first, about John Adams, our second president, how he felt about his son, uh, John Quincy Adams, or John Q, as he's known in my family. And I, I'm, sure, I'm sure he felt that same sense of fatherly pride as I do, but did anyone ever refer to them uh, the Adams, father and son, the way they do us, the Bushes now? Uh, did anyone ever call them two and six? I'm now 41. I was George Bush, President of the United States. Hey, 41, how are you doing? You know, and uh, we were at a dinner in Washington and John Dingell got up to introduce us. President's the 43rd, I'm the 41st president. And he said, what happens when they're both together? Do they just refer to them as 84? So I, I, I'm getting off the subject, but, but I, it's difficult when all your life you've been George Bush and now you're a number. And it's, it, it has benefits, clears up confusion. You know, a few years ago, there's a great portrait painter. If any of you guys are arrogant enough to want a portrait painted of you or your wife, Remember this guy, Ron Schur, he's a very busy man, but nevertheless, he came to Camp David and was going to paint what he felt was a historic portrait. Because you see, John Adams and John Quincy Adams never posed for a portrait after John Quincy Adams was elected president. So this was an historic first. And Ron Schur was a wonderful guy, and he, he's up there with his cameras, and we put on neckties, which you're really not supposed to do at Camp David. And we, we, uh, the president walked in and he said, Ron, you got 30 minutes. I could see this guy's face fall as he was thinking about his historic portrait. And so he started in with his, Mr. President, will you look over here? And, and, and we both looked there. And then he goes, Mr. President, no, no, sir, not you, you, you. And I said, look, Ron, you, he gave you 30 minutes. You've used up two of them now. And just call me 41 and call him 43. I couldn't do that, sir. I, you know, I, too much. You can't possibly do that. And so then, about two minutes later, he looked at his own watch, and he goes, 41, would you mind looking out here? And 43, you look over there. So it, we're, we're reduced to numbers. We're reduced to numbers. Somebody said, what's it like to have your son be president of the United States of America? It's exactly the same you feel about your kid when he comes home and hits a triple in Little League or your daughter gets an A when you thought they were going to throw her out in a detention or something like that. There's nothing different. There's not one thing different. And Barbara and I both feel that way and we feel the same way about our three kids that aren't in public life as we do about the President of the United States and as we do about the Governor of Florida. It's about family, and it's about values, and it's about our blessings at this stage in our lives, about how good life has been to us and how much family means.